So recently I got to thinking about how a lot of the pens I lean towards day to day are ones that I've made some sort of slight tweak to. And I don't mean like a modification or any permanent change. Usually just I've swapped out one refill for another that I think is either more interesting or a better fit for the pen. So I wanted to run through these. These are my, uh, I'd say my favorite sort of killer combinations. So a, a really good example of that might be this right here. I've talked about this pen a few times. This is the, uh, the Bic Renew, the Crystal Renew, which is that metal body Bic. It's quite nice, but it comes with a skinny refill on it. Sort of, I think it's the 1.0 millimeter refill on it. I went ahead and swapped out the refill for the 1.6 millimeter Bic Crystal, which is a refill that I find to be a lot more enjoyable to write with. Again, that's just, it's like, it doesn't require any sort of real expertise, but it moved this from being a pen that I liked in theory to one that I actually use all the time. And it's one of my favorites. So very slight level of effort involved, but yields a much better outcome, at least for me. So that's what I would consider to be one of these killer combinations or whatever it is we end up calling them. Next up, we have the Ballograph Epoca P. Very cool, classic pen body. Uh, very interesting 1960s or error design. Uh, these things come with a very traditional ballpoint refill that lasts forever. It's very reliable, but I don't really enjoy using it. So I've swapped out that refill for a Schmidt Easy Flow 9000B. Uh, just requires a little change here. You pull out the uh, plastic piece and put in a different one, or you can just cut the original plastic piece down on the Schmidt. And now you have a one of my favorite retractable pen bodies and really great click. And you have a really nice hybrid refill. I know opinions are mixed on the uh, Easy Flow 9000, but I really do like it, particularly in the in the uh, bold size. So this is one of the pens I've talked about a whole lot on this channel before. It's a Pilot S20 ballpoint, one of my absolute favorites, but I don't love the stock refill. So I've swapped that out for an upgraded refill called the, I believe it's called the BRFN-30M. So it's a wider ballpoint style refill. It's a lot smoother and it's a better writer than the one that comes with it. It's a $20 pen with a $5 refill upgrade. So not super cheap, but given the style and the writing performance of this pen, I think dollar for dollar, it's really hard to beat and uh, one of my absolute favorites. This is a similar pen. This is the Pilot Acro 300. I really like this pen body, but it comes in either a 0.5 or a 0.7 millimeter refill. This one is the 0.5. The Acro doesn't sell with a 1.0 millimeter refill, but you can track them down and get that 1.0 millimeter refill, it's called a BRF, and put it in this pen. And what you have then is you have a great pen body. I think this is about a $3 pen body. And I really, really like how it looks and how it writes, but with a nice wide refill in it. And this one came with black ink. I, I tend to prefer blue day to day. So I have a really nice upgrade here. I think you'll probably notice a trend. I tend to get my 0.5 and 0.7 millimeter pens that I use day to day and move them up to 1.0 millimeter. That's just my personal preference. You could do the same by tracking down a 0.38 millimeter or something like that if you like a skinnier writing pen. Here's another good example of that. This is the uh, the Uni, it's called the uh, Jetstream Edge. This pen was notable as it shipped with a 0.28 millimeter ballpoint refill, the thinnest ballpoint ever made when it, this one came out. I really like the pen body, particularly in this sort of like, uh, I don't know what this color is, chartreuse or something like that. But I got a little tired of writing with a 0.28 millimeter refill, so I don't need something that's skinny all the time. So I tracked down a 1.0 millimeter jet stream refill. It fits in here, no problem, uh, because the refill is the same regardless of the pen, it's just a jet stream refill. I have this thing outfitted with that nice, smooth jet stream ballpoint refill. Really fun combination. And I get to use this cool jet stream body with the, you know, the wide metal grip and that cool taper and this interesting color, but without having to need the 0.28 millimeter refill. 
Here's another great combination. This is a Pilot Timeline Gel. This is a retractable pen. Uses this cool twist system where you twist it here. The writing tip or the tip protector kind of knocks out and you turn it again and the refill comes out. This pen does not have a lot of refill options because it uses that really small Pilot refill that is also found on the S20, sort of proprietary design. But if you slightly tweak a Jetstream refill, you could put a Jetstream ballpoint refill in this. So now I have a cool Pilot timeline body, nice and short, easy to travel with because it has you know, blunt tips and it has this double knock design. But I have a Jetstream refill in there. So really enjoyable writer and a nice upgrade to this pen. You know, some of these refill changes won't be for everyone. They'll think I'm actually downgrading the pen, but that's sort of the interesting part about this is you can get a pen body you like and find a refill that's particularly well suited for that one. Here I have a very classic Parker Jotter flutter design. That's the all stainless steel one. The, you know, the standard Parker refill is fine, but I've changed this one over to a uh, Schneider 755 XB. So this is their super wide 1.6 millimeter ballpoint refill. So. I like to keep a ballpoint in my Parkers in case I have to, you know, I want to throw it in a bag or something and have something that could write on any surface. So I do keep it with a ballpoint, but I tend to, like I said, to go a little bit wider. So that Schneider refill, very reliable. This is uh, one I've talked about a bunch, a Zebra Blend. The refill that comes with this is limited to 0.7 millimeter, but Zebra has another refill family that is almost exactly the same as the one that comes with the blend. It's called the EQ 1.0. And these are a little bit hard to find, but they are out there. And you can just flop out the old one or flip out the old one, put this in, and now you can get into the EQ, which is the emulsion, so ballpoint ink, in a really great 1.0 millimeter refill. This is a good match for the Jetstream refill. And sometimes I actually do prefer it to the 1.0 millimeter Jetstream. This one I've talked about a few times. This is a really cool combination for me. This is a Pentel Infree, which is the Energel's sort of upgraded clear body design, uh, except this refill I have in here is a European rollerball refill called the uh, Pelican or Pelican, whatever you want to call it, 338. So this is a really nice high-end European rollerball. The refill ends up costing a whole lot more than the pen here, which maybe for you is just kind of not a great match, but you get a pen that might be suited for using in a two or $300 pen body. And now I have it in the Pentel Energel, which is a pen body I really like. And it has a perfect click with no modification. And you can even look inside there and see that really cool looking 338 refill, which is just a great writer. I have it in the broad, but it comes in a bunch of different sizes. Some other combinations here, just to close this out. This is a Pilot Explorer. This is a $20 or so Pilot fountain pen. It's a rival for like the uh, Pilot Metropolitan. Uh, this is stock, except this refill, this pen doesn't use a refill, it uses a cartridge. It'll accept Pilot's largest cartridge, the uh, Con 70 or the Con 70N. Most of Pilot's more affordable pens don't accept this this uh, converter, which it's too large. This pen does. so. I actually like this design. I know when it came out two or three years ago, a lot of people didn't like it. It was just kind of plasticky, it's sort of lightweight, it feels a little flimsy. It's really grown on me, and I do tend to use this one a fair bit, and I really like that it could accommodate that largest size converter. Here we have, I would say, probably my two favorites. One, that's this Lamy Vista. Uh, this one, I have this one outfitted with green ink, which is not the, combina the killer combination, but I have this outfitted with the Lamy Gold Nib Z95. That's the 14K 585, it means 14K, nib in a fine. Let's see, it might be dried. I haven't used this one in a while. So I really like, out of all Lamy's fountain pens, I would say the Vista is my favorite and the one I reached towards the most. So I got a one of those Lamy upgrade nibs, the gold nibs. I think it's called the Z55 which is a really fun writer. It's very springy and lively. Uh, it's a lot more sensitive than Lamy's standard nibs and it costs closer to, I don't know, $90 or $100. If you buy it new, you can buy it cheaper used. Then, you know, $15 for Lamy's typical steel nibs, but 
it ends up being a really great combination because it's a fun nib. If you're a Lamy enthusiast, it makes sense to at least try out one of their gold nibs at some point. And it has my favorite body. The fact that, you know, it's a $20 pen body with $100 nib on it, you know, slightly ridiculous, I guess. But if it's my favorite Lamy pen body, I feel like I might as well take advantage of it. Lastly, we have this. This is a Caveco gel. It's the Caveco Sport. I think they call it the roller ball or something like that. Uh, but this is their capped roller pen, not their uh, push button ballpoint. And this pen is so tiny that I think I never quite realized this until recently, but this tiny little pen body can accommodate a Schmidt capless refill. So this is called the P8127. So this is a full size roller ball refill. You know, it's in there really tight, so I'll leave it. So the, uh, I guess it's not technically the full size. The, the 8127 is the full size roller ball refill. The P8127 is the short roller ball refill. But this is the same refill that you would find in a typical roller ball. And now it fits in here perfectly with the spring even in this very portable pen. So you get full sized roller ball performance in this very pocketable little pen. If you post it, you have nearly a full size pen with a clip if you want. And then if you go ahead and put the cap on, you have a very small, highly pocketable pen that's also a really great writer with a roller ball refill. So I think that covers it. That's just my fun combinations of some pens that I really enjoy using. Thanks for watching.